Hello, Kate Connors. It's uh, me, Edward Avila. I am a K beauty content creator. Uh, I live in Seoul. As you all know, we're all at home. That's why you are probably watching this. Because we're all going to be watching the K content concert from home. I thought now would be the perfect time, if any, because we're not really going out. There's no reason for me to be wearing makeup. But it's times like this where I feel like it's an excuse to wear makeup. But also I figured it would be helpful if, let's say, once this whole situation is over and we can start going to concerts again, uh, I figured it would be helpful to give you some of my tips and tricks for um, makeup I guess you could wear to a concert because I've been to quite a few in my, uh, in my lifetime. If you're wondering why I look like I'm in a forest, it's because I'm at my friend Isaac's um, flower shop. Isaac, you want to go? She knows, she knows, she knows. Hello guys, I'm your flower boy, Isaac. Oh my... <laughs> I I need to put my lenses in real quick because I'm wearing my glasses obviously and I can't see without glasses so I'll do that. I'll be right back. Kidayoba, hold on. Okay, for skincare, here's the thing. There's a few things I'm gonna keep in mind going to a concert. Let's say you are at a concert at some point in the future and you happen to be watching this for some reason. It's gonna be hot. If it's the winter, they're gonna be blasting those heaters, so it's still gonna be hot. If it's summer, it's just gonna be hot. So in terms of skin makeup and skincare, keep me everything white. Unless you happen to live in a place where it's super cold, super, super cold and super, super dry, then I guess you can go more in, but starting with toner, please ignore my nails. For the first time, I decided to not get gel nails and use regular polish and it wasn't a good choice. So with the toner, I'm using it on a cotton pad because I'm just gonna do takto, takto hede, takto ara, Isaac. Ani takto, tangen toner. It's like this trend in Korea where you use a kind of cotton pad like this. Um, you put the toner and you use it to wipe down your face of all like the dirt, the dust, the the munjis. This is great to do right before makeup and it helps kind of smooth out the skin. I like to focus on areas like between the brows, around my nose, where you can really get like the, the PG, the, the little white, like little dead skin, like the oily, I don't know, that those things that you all hate. And also your lips because, um, I'm gonna use a mist and this mist has a, uh, ceramides in it so that I get that moisture. So the, the thing is, I have really dehydrated skin. Dehydrated skin is kind of where like the inside of your skin is dry, where even if you put a lot of moisturizer on, moisturizes on, it's your skin is still gonna feel tight and dry, you know when your skin feels tight? Using this mist, it really helps um, hydrate the inside of the skin. This is like my third bottle of this. So um, I like to literally throughout the day just spray this on and um, spray it between my skincare steps. And because it's a mist, it is really light and it's not like you're piling on like a lotion or anything. So you can get that hydration, but you don't have this heavy feeling. And that's important because when you go to a concert, you're gonna be sweating. It's just gonna feel like really tap tap -e. The one thing I would put on top of that is a sunscreen. This one is kind of like a lotion, so it doubles up as a moisturizer. I mean, we're gonna be inside, but you still, even if you're sitting by the window, uh, you still can get affected by those UVA, UVB rays. So it's important to use sunscreen every day. Every day. I like that this one doesn't have a, uh, a white cast. And it controls oil at the same time. Allegedly. <laughs> but she's still supposed to be chok chok hair, so. And before I forget, I'm gonna put a thick layer of lip balm on. The point of the lip balm is actually, I mean, yes, we're moisturizing the lips, but the main thing I want from this is I want it to soften up the dead skin that's sitting on the lips. So I'm gonna put quite a thick layer on, and I like this one because, how do you explain? The texture of it helps almost melt down the dead skin that's, sit, that's floating on top of your lips and loosens it up from the skin so that it'll be easier to remove it later. You can use lip scrubs, but I feel like those really irritate the lips and I like it when you remove the dead skin, but you still have that smooth lip surface, but I don't like it when you use a lip scrub and you get the dead skin off, but you have that like really, where your lips are like wrinkly and like really dry, dehydrated and like basically like ruined from all the scrubbing. I don't like that. So I always remove dead skin this way. I always do this the night before. It works the best because you have all the time at night for it to work. It's, I it's magic. 
So let's do skin. Here's the thing. We are going to a concert and there's a few things you need to take into consideration. It's gonna be hot again. Let's say you are the one to get a floor ticket. That is not me. I'm always at least like, I, I have to be sitting down. I'm sorry. I cannot stand up during a concert because you know very well, if they are 30 minutes late, that's 30 more minutes you're gonna be standing on the floor. So I make sure I at least try to get a seat like at the front of where the seating starts. That's my preferred position in the seating. Let's say you gotta make sure your oppa like sees you right there at the front when they win there at that part of the song where they go to the front of the stage where it's like nearest the people and you wanna make sure that when they see you, they notice you. We're gonna do makeup to kind of like enhance your natural features as much as possible so that they remember who you are. So that when they see you in that dark, dark stadium, they'll remember you, but also we want to be comfortable. So for skin makeup, there's two things. When you're sitting kind of in the crowd, it's gonna be dark anyway. So most of your flaws are kind of gonna be like, they won't be apparent. To be honest, your opa's probably not gonna look at you for more than three seconds anyway. So you don't have to focus too much on the skin. And also it's gonna to be too tough up hair. It's gonna feel thick and heavy if you put too much on, especially all the sweat, and the humidity in the air, it's nasty. And also if you're in that certain position on, this, on the floor where the light might hit your face, sometimes putting foundation all over your face can make you look like your head is floating on top of your neck, which is not a cute look. So to keep it natural, and this is also kind of a tip for those people that go out every day with their mask on, but they um, don't want anything too heavy. Uh, I'm gonna use concealer to do my base makeup, basically. It's not gonna be the thing where, you know, some people will be like, oh, let's do a base makeup using concealer, but then they put concealer all over their face like foundation. I'm like, what is even the point? So we're using concealer just to even out the skin tone for the most part. Now, when it comes to choosing a color, if you're only gonna be using liquid concealer as your base, most people, they'll have their normal skin tone, but then they have those dark patchy areas, those like chichikan, like kind of like dull areas of the face where it's like a little bit darker than your natural skin tone, I guess, or like areas of redness. You want to find a color that's either your natural skin tone, hopefully your neck matches your face, or a little bit darker because if you use, because normally a lot of people will have like their foundation color and then they'll use a liquid concealer that's lighter than their foundation to brighten up areas of the face or whatever. But if you're only using concealer and you use that lighter color, then it's going to look whiter and ashy. In this concealer that I have, um, I'm normally the shade light, but I'm gonna use medium. Normally this is the color I use when I'm using foundation, but I'm gonna try using, oh wait, where am I? The medium to cover basically the center of my face, which is where I want most of the product. And this is especially important for under the eyes because if you're using concealer that you use for under your eyes to brighten, it will look extra white under your eyes and that's not a good look. It'll look like you went tanning at the beach, but you wore sunglasses the whole time. I'm not doing a whole ton. I'm just putting enough to help cover most of the problematic areas. If you're getting up towards your eye, you're noticing there's still a little bit of product on the um, puff, then I like to wipe it on the back of my hand. Because under, especially under the eyes, you want to keep as little product there as possible. I'm going to put some here because I am a man with a beard, so I got to cover that up. And if you're used to wearing a lot of foundation on a normal basis, you kind of want to control yourself because sometimes, because you're used to your face with full foundation and the full concealer, you might be tempted to just use the con concealer everywhere, but you want to avoid that. And literally, this looks disgusting, but to be honest, that's how much lip balm you need on your lips. So I only used a very small amount, but you can see how much more even my face is looking compared to this side. And trust me, you are gonna thank me because when you are at that concert, when you are sitting there worrying about, especially if you wear a mask, even before this whole situation, I've seen, I, I see you people out there with your your black cloth mask that have like, oh, BTS or like, Annyeong or Saranghae on them. Even in that situation, doesn't it just feel so uncomfortable knowing that your makeup is like smearing on your mask? I hate that. And lately, you know those like beauty quangos, like those uh, commercials for things, whatever, where they're like testing if it, you know, mudos on your mask. And then they like, put the mask on, they're just like, and they take the mask off and show you and look, there's nothing on there. That's not how it works. You, when, you, when you're talking, when you're doing anything, even when you're wearing a mask on, it will rub on your mask and you want as little of that as possible. And so that's why using concealer like this is really helpful. 
but if you really can't get away with using very minimal product and you have to have your foundation, then by all means, mandero hace. Isaac! Hold you up. <laughs> the nose, whatever's left on your puff, you look ahead. Ah. You don't to be honest, I don't like putting anything on my nose in this kind of makeup because it just feels really tough to hit because my nose the, the your nose is the part that sticks out the most, so it's gonna rub the most on your mask and I hate that feeling, so whatever's left I just like you know, how, okay. how about brush? Brush yeah. something. Yeah. And then on your ima, your forehead. <laughs> you can still see a lot of imperfections, but honestly, your opa is not gonna see that on stage. Only concept. Yeah. To me, how I'm so yakan ipun makeup ina. Mm, okay. You like what's wrong? Okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. How? Ah, wait, come on. Wait, no. For blush, I'm gonna use a cream blush. This one. Uh, because it's cream, though, I want to do it before I powder and it will blend better on my skin if it's not powdered. So that's what I'm gonna do this first. The reason I'm using this is because if you use, you can use a regular powder blush, but that girl, that's gonna be like the first thing to go because with all that heat and the sweat and the humidity, uh, it kind of just goes away. So I'm using this because I feel like it lasts a little bit longer. That might look like a lot, but Whatever, like I said, it's gonna disappear anyway. My camera died. I have it plugged in and it should be charging, but she was like, bye. Isaac got me coffee. Now I can powder my face. Um, I, I find that loose powder tends to last a little bit better um, compared to pressed powder. For some reason, I find that pressed powder kind of... It makes it easier for the foundation to boodle on the mask. To be honest, a lot of times I prefer not even powdering because no matter what you do, it's gonna boodle on the mask anyway. But if you have powder on, then it, if you try to touch up, it will look really cakey because it's foundation, powder, and then more foundation. So charari, because no matter what situation you're in, it's gonna boodle anyway. Just go either very little powder or no powder at all because at least if it's unpowdered, you can touch up again with your cushion if you're using like a cushion foundation or something. Getting on the puff and then I like to fold it like this and do that. Whether it's puffs or brushes for any type of makeup step you're doing, making sure it's in the tool helps. And it's not just sitting on top because that's when you get too much on your face. And I'm concentrating this mostly on the center where I actually put the base. The thing with brushes versus puff, powder puffs is that with a brush, it kind of just removes the outer layer of shine on your face so you're not shiny everywhere. You can just kind of like mattify the certain parts that you need. With a puff, you're actually pulling the oiliness from like more inside the skin so you remain more matte. The whole point of the skin makeup is to put as little as possible so that you're, you're not like left with like this cakey mess because when you start to get hot and sweaty, then the foundation starts to lift. I'm gonna do my brows. Yeah, you can do your brows however you'd like. Okay, now, shading, like contouring, I feel like it's a waste of time. It's kind of, no, no, it's really, again, if you're in like the dark of like the audience and nobody's gonna see it, or if you get the bright shining lights in your face, still it's gonna go away anyway, nobody's gonna really see it. So um, if anything, I like to maybe highlight this as well, it's gonna just like disappear anyway, but, well, to me, I'd rather highlight my features than like try to just hide everything. And also because um, if you only apply concealer like in the center of your face, it kind of gives you that natural shading effect anyway because you're evening the center of your face and you're not putting product all the way down here, which by the way, there's like nothing on here. So it makes it more comfortable when you're wearing either a mask or you're just like in general, overall, even if you weren't wearing a mask or anything, just having no product here feels much more comfortable. And since everything is in here, the focus is going to be here. And so I think it's better to just use highlighter. For me, that would be on my nose, which when you're sweating, it's going to be disappear as well. But now for eye makeup, technically, if, we were, if we're going for like long wearing stuff, I like to use cream products like these. But I like to use powder shadow. So I guess the only tip would just to be use an eye primer. And for me, this is my favorite because um, it literally keeps eyeshadow on like literally this when you put it on. And because my eyes are like the kind where 
it will my eyeshadow will smudge easily because I've oily eyelids. However, you put your eyeshadow on in the morning, it will look like that until you wash it off, basically. Uh, she keeps dying, my camera. When you're applying eye primer, you want to make sure you like put a thin layer, but like kumkumage, kubaja, kumkumage, yeah, thoroughly, like into your lash line as well. That's how you see them do it at the shops. Up there in Chongdam. In Chongdam Dong. Chongdam makeup, yeah. <laughs> you have to get it everywhere. Because if you don't put it on correctly, then because it's not gonna make your eyeshadow last any longer. And you wanna make sure it's actually dry. You don't wanna put eyeshadow on top of it when it's wet because it will look or look to look Yeah. <sighs> my Korea boo anymore, honey. At this point you can choose whatever eyeshadow you want. I'm gonna use um this new one that I got that I've been literally obsessed with. And I don't know if you've noticed, but we haven't used any brushes up until now. We did. I did use a puff though, so uh, use this one. And then these colors. What is that music? Could you boost the club, yeah? Ah, yeah, the dance studio. Ah, dance studio, so. Okay, I don't feel like I need to explain this part just because I feel like I don't know if you watch my if you happen to watch my YouTube tutorials I do the same shape all the time so base outer corner a little bit of the inner corner this is especially helpful if you have more Western features and you want the more K beauty look I guess doing this shape kind of helps extend your eye this way rather than making it like look bigger this way and then using my finger these types of shadows work the best with with your little songarak. Your little sunglarak. Oh, so, oh, my God. Yeah, I got one. If your OPPA does not notice you with this eye makeup, I'm not the type that really has egg sire, so I'm gonna show you how to get it. Um, I'm using a pencil concealer, actually. And you originally use these to like cover up spots, but if you take something like this and use it under your eyes, just put a little line here, and then use your finger to blend back and forth. This serves two functions. One, it brightens up this area because sometimes it can look dark and like, you can look tired under here. But two, it actually emphasizes your, what would be your egg gusar if you had it. Lately, it's been like a trend in uh, Korea with like egg gusar makeup to do that kind of thing. Thanks to like Twice makeup artists and people like them. Then I'm gonna use a powder shadow to go on top. My camera literally said, bye, again. But I forgot to do the other eye. So I did the other eye off camera. But anyway, Agusa, you don't have to go in with anything shimmery. You can if you want, but that will really like make your Agusa stand out. I'm just gonna use a matte color that's kind of like something like these two colors. Something that's kind of brightening. Or, if you happen to put eyeshadow all the way down to the lower lash line, putting that concealer first will help keep it from looking like too dark and making you look really tired. So either way, that concealer trick is really good. I'm using the two colors I used to go in the outer corner. As you all know, this outer triangle zone. This outer triangle zone that we all love to emphasize in K-beauty. Also don't forget the inner. This will really help elongate your eye shape. And then I'm gonna take the shimmery shade and put that on a little brush for egg yosar. Just in the center, right at the base of the lashes. I guess if you do eyeliner, you can do that. Avid viewers of my channel know I do not use eyeliner. So I tend to just, whatever is the darkest color in the palette, I'll use that on a eyeliner spudging brush and create the suggestion of an eyeliner because eyeliner doesn't suit me. But now would be the time to do it if you are that person. I only put it on the outer and the inner corners. If I'm doing someone else's makeup, I always do the outer inner corner above the lash line and in the center, in the waterline, beneath the lash line. Um, I'll put pictures right here to show you what I'm talking about and how it helps create a more elongated eye. Putting eyeliner on your entire upper lash line across like this kind of makes your eyes look more tap tap and more big this way and round rather than long. I'm 10. Why don't we play around with this? Because I recently bought this glitter 
that is meant for like your face or something, and that's where I'm going to use it, but it's not so pretty. I've never used this before. I only tried it on the back of my hand. So this could go south very, very quickly. The thing about these things, types of um, chunky glitter type things though, is that the base that they're in is really chok chok like really moist and wet. So it can smear foundation, but luckily for us, we didn't really put foundation along where I'm gonna put it at least. Um, we did put powder, but it should be okay. Um, hold on, I like to do this first. I have no idea if that looks cute on camera or not. But as you tap it on the skin, the base should start to dry down. Oh, that's actually really cute. Isaac! Mm -hmm. Loa. Oh. Don't know oily on the chin. You go, you go, you go, you go. I'm not the one. You're good. I'm not the one. 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 I'm not 약간 하이라이트처럼 앞에 약간 사이즈 보이는데 이렇게 하면 잘 보이는? 오, 오. 근데 좀 아프네? 아파? <웃음> 너무 샤프해. 조심해. 스크래치 나. 리얼 OPP야. 케어링 해주는. 아, 알고 보니 아니 그냥 빨리 해. <웃음> 빨리 끝내라. <웃음> 빨리 집에 가자. <웃음> Now I'm not much of a lash person, but I figured it would help you guys out if you do lashes or whatever. If you're gonna be at a concert. Kind of curling your lashes in a natural way is kind of like leaving me open, like there's no point. So you might as well just kind of go all out. Normally, for like a more natural daily look, it's better to kind of like curl your lashes like this so you get more of an actual C curl, not just like a t -t 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 kind of lash. But again, because we're gonna be in a concert, feel free to do so. And then a coat of mascara. And then always, 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 I use a heated lash curler. They usually use a topoki stick with a lighter at the shop, but I think that's really dangerous, so I just use these. This is just from Amazon. This serves two purposes. One, maybe three even. One, to kind of set the lashes. Two, to kind of help lift them up more. And three, melt any like clumpy bits of mascara. Actually, maybe even four. Sometimes if you do use the lash curls, just do the one kind of strong like curl, I guess. Sometimes the lashes can go in weird directions, so you can use this to kind of fix that. And then kind of hold it with your finger to cool it. If you find that you're lacking in the lash department, you can always use false lashes, but sometimes a long strip can be a little bit uncomfortable and you have to worry about the sides lifting. So what I like to use on other people is actually individuals. And this, again, is just from Amazon, but if you do have these full strip ones, you can go ahead and also just kind of cut them down. You don't need to use too many. What I do is I just take the glue on the lid, just like a, that is not a tiny bit. You want to just take a tiny bit. Grab your lash and dip a little bit in the glue. And again, this is kind of how they do it at the shop here in Korea. But what you're going to do is you're actually going to go under into the spots that are kind of like empty. And kind of help it out by pushing it up. On camera, that probably makes no difference, but I'll do the whole thing and I'll show you. I use about four or five of them, and you can see the difference that it makes. And the thing is, I don't know why, but actually putting it under your lashes, it's way more comfortable and it doesn't really feel like you're wearing any lashes, as long as you did it correctly and you don't get that pokey feeling with regular strip lashes. The lip balm has had its time to completely soak in and hopefully your lips are all completely like, like the dead skin is kind of like melted now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a mood tissue, a wet wipe. I'm gonna be rubbing it off. The important thing to note is that you're not doing this. You're doing a one direction sort of swiping and we're only swiping in one direction. I do this pretty often, so you're not you're not gonna really see much. But you'll notice if you don't do this often, you do this for the first time, all this dead skin is just gonna start piling up. And it's kind of nasty, but your lips are gonna be so smooth afterwards. 
And if you end up wiping your base off, it's okay. You can just touch it up. You see how much smoother it looks? And then last but not least, for lip makeup. You're gonna be screaming, you're gonna be shouting, you're gonna be doing the most during the concert. So you really don't wanna be like wasting your time with like lip products and like retouching up and all that. So in this kind of situation, I like to also do this when I know I'm gonna be filming for a long time. So um, it's just to actually just use a tint um, that stains your lips pretty well. This is actually a newer one. 3CE Blur Water Tint in Double Wind. This is the water tint, but it actually dries down to like a velvet finish, but it still stains the lips. And that's kind of what you want to go for is something that will stain the lips. And I know it's a thing for us to put it on the bottom lip and just do that. But you still have to make sure you put some, you actually apply it like directly on the other lip, because if you don't, all that you'll have on the top lip is just a stain from the bottom lip, and that doesn't last that long. That's, that's basically it. Be honest, it's in the it's like stained in the lips because because when you're like shouting and screaming and like dancing and everything, your lip makeup will like probably erase, and so but at least you'll have like the stain. If you don't have a lip tint, you do have like a lipstick that will or any kind of lip product that will stain your lips. Putting like a thick layer of it on and then using like a, you know, a, wet, wipe, a wet wipe or a tissue and just wiping it off and leaving that stain there. It will be comfortable because you don't have anything on your lips technically, but you'll have the color that's stained in your lips. So that's um, my main tip, I guess. I'm gonna do my hair and I'll be right back with you. So there's my tutorial. Um, extra tips for, let's say, if you actually do go to a concert, especially if it's the winter, wear light clothing. Do not wear heavy clothing. I know it's cold and you're probably gonna be cold outside when you're waiting to get into the concert, but I swear you will not regret it. You will regret it if you wear thick clothes because it gets so hot in concert halls during, even if it's the winter, because of the heaters and also because you're jumping and sweating and all the people around you, just all the energy. So I always make sure to dress lightly or something I can easily take off. So honestly, I don't like wearing jackets because of that, I have to hold them. So wear something lightly and also ca always carry a fan. It gets so hot in those things and when you have all these people around you sweating, you're gonna be cool because what? You got a fan and you dress lightly, even though I'm wearing a hoodie right now. I hope you found that useful. Um, yeah, bye. Thanks, Isaac.